So the Human Covenant War was very asymmetrical. It saw the technologically advanced Covenant coming up against humanity, and the UNSC was forced to employ some very unique tactics in the space battles of the conflict. So I figure today we'll take a look at some of the tactics employed by the UNSC and how effective they really were. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. So it should go without saying that the UNSC does not have the technological edge that the Covenant did. The Covenant was bringing far more technologically advanced weapons to nearly every battle. And while the UNSC was able to kind of balance the scales on the ground with the use of the Spartan program, in orbit they were vastly outgunned at nearly every turn. So today we'll take a look at some of the strategies that the technologically inferior UNSC used to attempt to hold off Covenant attacks. So first off, we have to understand some of the weapons at the disposal of the UNSC. The primary weapon on UNSC vessels is their Magnetic Accelerator Cannon, or MAC gun. As the name suggests, this accelerates a projectile using the forces of magnetism up to nearly the speed of light, and this allows it to punch clean through many Covenant ships. But on top of that, they had several other weapons at their disposal. A large arsenal of missiles could deliver anything from nuclear weapons to high explosives, and heavy point defense cannons could be used against smaller fighters. But ultimately, some of the heaviest weapons the UNSC had at their disposal were their MAC guns and their missile bombardments. They were coming up against the Covenant, who were using primarily plasma-based weapons that could burn through armor fairly easily, and many Covenant vessels had shields, something that UNSC ships simply didn't. These shields could take the brunt of large attacks and would make it very hard for the UNSC to really be able to carry out strikes. So how did the UNSC manage to take down Covenant fleets? In most battles that the UNSC could claim even anything remotely close to a victory, they had to outnumber the Covenant by a significant factor. Ultimately, using large numbers of smaller UNSC vessels, things like frigates and destroyers, to swarm larger Covenant ships. And one of the most useful tactics that the UNSC uses were coordinated MAC gun attacks. Basically, they would surround a Covenant vessel and all fire their MAC guns simultaneously. This would ultimately shred the Covenant vessel with large light speed projectiles at a fairly close range. And when these attacks were properly coordinated and carried out simultaneously, they could overwhelm the shields of Covenant vessels, and ultimately do a lot of damage to the vessels themselves. However, these attacks would often come at a price. With UNSC vessels getting so close to Covenant ships, they would often be destroyed by Covenant vessels. But the MAC cannons also vary in power and capability. Smaller vessels like frigates and destroyers would have one or two MAC cannons on board, and ultimately could fire a handful of shots before needing to reload them. Larger vessels like Halcyon and Marathon-class cruisers would have rapid-fire MAC guns that could fire successions of up to three shots. This would allow them to really do a lot of damage basically single-handedly. However, once again, being a single target against a Covenant fleet was never really a situation that any of these vessels wanted to find themselves in. You see, the MAC guns required a significant amount of time to be reloaded, Loaded and reused. So after you shot, you basically had to defend yourself while you reloaded, and that took quite a bit of time. But as I mentioned, the MAC guns weren't the only powerful weapon the UNSC had at their disposal. They also had a lot of missiles, and a lot of very powerful warheads to put on those missiles. Now, nuclear weapons obviously were an effective tool against the Covenant. A well-placed nuclear strike could feasibly destroy a Covenant vessel, and a well-targeted one might even be able to take out a small Covenant fleet. But the trick became getting them in close enough. The missiles moving slower than MAC gun rounds were easily targetable by Covenant point defense systems, and these missiles would usually have to be involved in a larger swarm to guarantee that some of them would get through. Now, the problem comes in with the fact that many UNSC vessels didn't carry a ton of nuclear weapons. A handful at most, and they were used in the most extreme circumstances. That meant that they were less than useful in larger engagements. So ultimately, one of the strategies we see used a lot during the Human Covenant War wasn't the nuclear strategy, but was instead using large numbers of MAC cannons. That's why we see the UNSC use tactics that often are kind of reminiscent of what you would see from like an ant colony. A coordinated attack carried out by a large number of smaller vessels. This is where things like heavy MAC guns, like what we see on orbital defense platforms, would come in handy. Firing a larger, more capable round meant that they didn't need a large fleet of smaller vessels to be able to decimate a Covenant ship. This is why the orbital defense platforms around Earth and Reach were so crucial, and why the Covenant was obviously desperate to destroy these platforms before they could be used during the first battle of Earth. And in a lot of situations, these tactics would fail. Most space battles fought during the Human Covenant War wouldn't end in a human victory. They would just end in massive casualties and large numbers of ships destroyed. These tactics were fine when you're overwhelming a single Covenant ship, but when you're up against a larger fleet or flotilla, they're basically useless. You really can't dedicate 10, 20, 30 frigates to taking out each and every ship in a Covenant formation of hundreds of vessels. 
And so even with tactics like this, the UNSC wasn't able to win most naval engagements against the Covenant. And the tactical realities of their situation forced them to design their fleets in very unique ways and think outside of the box when they're defending strongholds like Earth or Reach. That's why the fleet defending Earth, the home fleet, is so fascinating. And if you want to learn more about fleet composition and the home fleet in particular, I'll leave a link up here to my video on that. And I want you to let me know down in the comments if you think there's a better strategy that could have been used by the UNSC to defeat large Covenant forces. And last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time. <laughs>